Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to European Week where today I'm going to be reviewing a French locomotive. So even though today's model is a French locomotive, it was actually made in Italy by, uh, not by Lima by the way, but by Riverossi, which is a very well-known manufacturer of model railway stuff. And I believe the company is now owned by Hornby, but today's model comes from an era, I think, before Hornby owned them. And it is this, it is a French 060. Now I have shown this locomotive before in a running session and following that running session people were very very generous with their information on this and many people told me that this was a French Bourbonnais or Bourbonnais locomotive I think that's how you pronounce it from the PLM railway which was a pre-nationalisation railway over in France. Uh, now I've looked up the Bourbonnais locomotives and uh, they do look a little bit like this but they also look quite a little bit different so I'm not 100% sure that that's what this is. Uh, now maybe it's just a bit like the Mahano style of model where it just resembles a particular loco in real life but not too closely or maybe there are different types of Bourbonnet locomotive which look a little different to this. It's all a little confusing to be honest but uh, either way I think that's what it is but if you know any better please do let me know in the comments and that would be very interesting. So I bought this on eBay, it is second hand as you might be able to tell by the box and it cost me 60 quid which is a little bit expensive but as I say these uh, Riverossi engines are really known for their quality so we'll see what this is like and um, well maybe it will form an opinion with me on River Rossi and it might also influence whether or not I decide to buy any more. So let's get this out together and let's find out what this is like. My first ever River Rossi and my first ever French locomotive. All right, so here we go then. Now, the box doesn't tell you very much on this model, as we're going to see, although, as we can see here, it does say that it's an HO model, which does make sense. Uh, people always ask me about the differences between HO and double O, and it is a little bit of a, a confusing subject, but basically, the gauges are the same. So, HO gauge is the same as double O gauge, but the scale is very slightly different. Double O gauge is a little bit larger, but you can mix and match between the two, provided, of course, you don't care too much about absolute scale, because, as I say, the scales are a bit different. Uh, but other than that, they are at least compatible, so you can run HO's trains on the double O track. Okay, so there's, as I say, there's very little to read on the box. If we show you the end of the box, you can see it's just 40, <laughs> locomotiva, locomotive, and that's about it. It doesn't show you any more there, which kind of, <laughs> to me, says how lucky we are over here in the UK, because our manufacturers, Hornby, Backman, Oxford Rail, Hattons, all of them really, they all tell you exactly what you're getting on the box. But I've noticed with a lot of the, well, now French and American and other stuff, uh, uh, that a lot of the time it doesn't and you're left having to try and find out what these things are so yeah just a little food for thought but apart from that yep yeah, there's nothing else on the box the back of the box is blank as you can see so we're going to get this out straight away and we will take a look okay so this box opens a bit weirdly it's not very secure <laughs> as you can see it just opens up like that but i suppose it's easy access isn't it now what should we start with uh okay well we'll get the tender first then shall we so here is the tender, as you can see, it's a really, really tiny tender. And the amazing thing is, you won't believe this, but the motor is actually in the tender. This is a tender drive unit and it's pretty small. Now, normally I would say that makes sense uh, because this loco is pretty small, as you can see, let's get this out. Um, however, the tender isn't exactly large either, is it? So I wasn't sure when I ordered this, whether or not the motor would be in the tender or not. But no, it is in the tender. And here is the loco. As you can see, it really is a quite a nice looking thing. Uh, if you particularly like British locomotives, I, I can imagine that some people might not like this because it is quite an oddly proportioned thing, isn't it, to say the very, very least. But yeah, it is quite a nice looking thing. I quite like the unusualness to it, as always. Uh, the, look at the spacing of the wheels, the uh, the proportions of the, the domes and the chimney and things. Yeah, it is an odd looking locomotive and the loco itself is very, very light and the tender itself is uh, deceptively heavy, I would say. It doesn't look like it can be as heavy as it is, but uh, it is and I'll perhaps weigh it later on to show you well to tell you just how much it does weigh so there we go let me know in the poll is this something that appeals to you or not because when I put this up in a running session people said oh it's ugly and other people said oh I absolutely love that so it really does divide people I think um, I think I think it's a bit like the Q1 really it is ugly and I can completely agree with people that say that but uh, I find it quite an endearing ugliness <laughs> 
if that makes sense. It's quite a nice thing to say, isn't it? Um, but yeah, that's what I think. Um, yeah, I, I'm not. I don't. I wouldn't say I absolutely love it, but I, I wouldn't go as far as to say I detest it either. So yes. Anyway, we'll take a close look at this in just a second. But first of all, here's a little bit of history on the uh, French railways and, of course, the uh, Bourbonnais, if that is indeed what this is. So, unlike in the UK, the French actually classified their steam locos by the number of axles and not the number of wheels. So this one would normally be an 060 in the UK, but in France they would call this an 030, which uh, to us British makes no sense, of course, unless you know that it's counting the axles. So as you can probably tell, you might have noticed this loco is in the SNCF livery, which was founded in 1938 when nationalisation occurred in France. So similar to what happened really in the UK when we got nationalised 10 years later. So I think the SNCF is a bit like our British Railways, a bit like BR, and uh, as far as I understand it anyway. Anyway, I'm told that this locomotive came from the PLM Railway and that they were known as the Bourbonnais engines, as I've already said. And they might have been introduced as early as 1857, primarily for good work and once again as far as I understand it the PLM is a pre-nationalization railway as far as I know so it's perhaps a bit like the LNER or something like that as we would get in this country and yeah as I say they were supposedly primarily for goods work and a big thank you to Steam and Smoke 97 for the info on this that's much appreciated so there it is up close for you then, the Riverossi French SNCF 030 tender locomotive. And I think really whether or not you think these are attractive, I'm sure you'll agree that uh, these are certainly interesting looking things. Now, you might not have been able to tell, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is quite an old model. I don't know quite how old. Uh, I seem to be not doing very well with uh, finding out information on this thing. But I have a strong suspicion that it probably predates me at the very least. Maybe it's quite a lot older. Uh, but either way, I mean, it's, it is quite a basic model. I think you can probably tell that just by looking at this sort of distance. However, there are quite a few nice touches on this as well, although I wouldn't say it's super, super detailed. And as I say, I spent 60 quid on this, so uh, I was perhaps expecting the detail to be a little bit more. But as I say, I think with River Rossi, you're paying quite a bit for the brand and, uh, you know, regardless really of what the model's like. So let's take a look at the local... Oh, in fact, no, I'll talk about the weights first. So as promised, I have weighed them and the tender is very... Very, very heavy as I've said it weighs 110 grams approximately and that is basically exactly the same as the new Hornby Terrier and you can see just how much larger the Terrier is than the tender so the tender is very very heavy but the loco in fact weighs nearly half that it's about 60 grams so the loco is very very light indeed although of course as a bit of a dummy that just gets pushed along by the tender I suppose that is fair enough you don't want that to be too heavy and eating up some of the pulling power Okay, so let's take a look at the loco then. So you can clearly see that the amount of painted detail is kept to an absolute minimum on this. In fact, the only two things I can see is the lettering on the side of the cab. There's a close-up if anybody was interested in what that said. And of course, the buffer beam, which also has a little bit of lettering on it there. It's a 3A, as you can see. I think that must have been some sort of SNCF classification. But literally, that is it. The rest of the model is just done in this interesting looking green plastic, uh, which again is uh, not a green that we tended to see on uh, our railways in the UK. It's not really like BR or Great Western Green. It's just, uh, I don't know really how to describe it, but it is different, isn't it? It's more of a sort of military green, I would say, if that makes sense to anybody. So yeah, it is quite basic, and a lot of the detail is just a part of the moulding, mainly the handrails, as you can see, and the pipework. It is all just moulded onto there. But there are quite a few separately fitted parts and it must be said that the separately fitted parts that are there are made of metal so you've got the reversing rod here as you can see it's quite a chunky thing it's not very realistic but as you can see it is clearly made of metal we've got what might be I suppose is this a whistle on in front of the cab here you can see that that is a metal piece as well which is quite nice it, it does suggest quality doesn't it when you see these separately fitted metal parts and you've also um, I don't really know what this is coming out of the dome you've got uh, two more metal components um, I suppose there could be say safety valves or something or they could be the whistles I'm not absolutely sure uh, again uh, I don't know very much about British locomotives which is bad enough but give me a French one and it's absolutely hopeless but uh, either way you can see that those are made of metal and also interestingly while the most of the chimney is made of plastic you can see that there's this sort of well what I assume is a bit of a cover over the chimney there which is made of metal and it's uh, got a lot of metallic shine to it now I don't really know exactly what that would be for uh, I think it's a mechanical thing i wonder if there's uh, a control inside the cab for it because you've got this uh, sort of mounting underneath it so yeah I, I assume it's some sort of cover that covers
covers up the chimney, maybe to stop dirt or rainwater coming in when the loco is not in use. I'm not 100% sure. Um, if so, that sounds desirable. So whether or not many British locos had these, or maybe they were hand fitted perhaps, or maybe they were kept indoors when they weren't being used, I'm not sure. But either way, this has got one, and I thought that was quite interesting. The smoke box door is a very, very odd looking thing as well. Uh, yes, completely unlike anything we get in the UK. And you've got this uh, sort of triangle shaped lamp on the front, which is quite cool. And you've also got uh, dummy lamps on the left and right, which are also in the green plastic, which is a little bit strange. But I suppose it's nice that there are lamps actually fitted onto there, and they're very, very large, especially considering this is HO scale. Those are about as big as a person. So yeah, very, very large lamps. And as you can see, we've already looked at the buffer beam, but it does have the buffers, but those aren't sprung. And I think in the days when this model was made, the buffers didn't tend to be sprung anyway. And if we take a look at the wheel set, you can see we do have outside cylinders on this model, which have uh, sort of connecting rods there going to the wheel set. All of the connecting rods and the coupling rods are quite chunky though, I must say. Um, I suppose if this was made today, they would be a lot more fine scale. But I suppose chunky does mean durable, which is good. And if we take a look at the cab, there are no glazed windows, unfortunately, and the level of cab detail inside is very, very minimal. There's a tiny amount of molded detail, but there's certainly nothing painted in there. So quite basic, but I suppose, uh, um, you know, given the age of this thing, I suppose that is fair enough. So looking at the tender then, once again, a very, very odd proportioned tender, especially if you're used to the UK stuff. As you can see, there's a little bit of lettering on the side there. The underframe is uh, mostly taken up with the mechanism. You can see there's a very large chassis block uh, behind the frame there, which uh, is quite visible, but I suppose there's not an awful lot they could have done about that. You've got this very, very tall coal load, which I think must be so tall in order to house the motor. And I must say, to be honest with you, the coal on the model looks ultra realistic, especially when you consider the level of detail on the rest of it. So the coal, I think, is definitely the best feature of this in terms of realism. It, it looks so realistic, like uh, unbelievably realistic, better than super modern stuff that I've got from Hornby and Backman and things. So yeah, the coal gets a thumbs up. And by the way, the mechanism is very, very good quality in this thing. What I'll do is I will try and film a shot and uh, insert it later on of the actual mechanism. So if I've been able to do that, there it is. And I have serviced this so I can say what a quality mechanism that is and what a complex mechanism that is as well. Uh, it's certainly not as basic as some of the Hornby Ringfield tenders, as, as you might remember. Okay, so that's that. And around the back, you can see there's quite a lot of detail there. There's some toolboxes, there's some more printing. And once again, a relatively highly detailed buffer beam there with, uh, once again, non-sprung buffers. So there's the Loco. I actually really enjoy looking at this because it's so unlike basically anything that I've looked at before. And for that reason, I'm going to say I do quite like this. But either way, I'd be very, very interested to find out what you guys think. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about performance then. Let's get this down onto the track. I might get it coupled up to my wagon pack that I looked at on Wednesday because I think they're desperate to be running again. So we'll do that. We'll see how this thing hauls and we'll get to it straight away. All right, here we go. Okay, so there she is then, the Bourbonnet down onto the track, ready for her first little performance test. And first, I will talk a little bit about the actual mechanism then. Now, to be honest with you, despite Riverossi's reputation, I don't think the mechanism is really that great on this. Uh, I'll tell you why I think that. It's also not terrible, but we have definitely seen better. So we have, I believe, 10 wheels on this model, right? So that's six on the Loco and four on the Tender. And of those 10 wheels, only half of them pick up, only five. And the way it works is a little bit like some of the Hornby tender driven locos where the loco picks up from one rail so that's three pickups and the tender picks up from the other so that's another two so we've only got five pickups there uh, so that's a little bit of a missed opportunity of course and it does mean that the uh, the rail that only has two pickups the ones on the tender of course uh, is a bit of an issue with reliability especially on express points and that sort of thing also the way that the power is transmitted between the loco and tender is a little bit crude as well on the draw bar there's just a bit of bent wire which just contacts the uh, the bar on the tender and makes a contact that way. It does seem to work, I must say, but I can imagine having continuity issues with that, certainly as time goes by. So that's something that has to be kept clean. So as I say, there's nothing particularly wrong in that. As I say, it does work, but I was perhaps just expecting something a little bit more reliable. Now, as I've already said, the actual mechanism in the tender isn't too bad. You could see the complexity there and you've got all proper brass gears and all that sort of thing. However, it is just a basic three pole motor in there, which is what it is. And despite the weight of the tender, it does have traction tires, which I, as you know, I don't like. They collect 
dirt and they don't work very well. And because of the age of the thing, they've gone hard as well, so they're not actually producing that much traction. And if this relied on, say, weight on its wheels rather than just rubber on its wheels, that doesn't go out of date, that doesn't have a shelf life, and that this thing would be a much better puller. However, it isn't too bad, but uh, anyway, we'll give it a little bit of a test. Let's try a slow speed test and see what we can get out of this. As you can see, it sort of kicks in quite roughly at that speed with a bit of buzzing. Let's try it in reverse. So yeah, it's not designed for slow speed, unfortunately, this one. It's not dreadful, but uh, again, I think we have seen better, even on vintage models. Okay, so let's do a bit of a pulling power test then. So I have set up my European wagons, uh, courtesy of s and 7 f 88 Thank you again for that, Callum, if you're watching. Um, only eight wagons there, so once again, not a huge load for this little loco. But as I say, it's uh, only this, really, that is the engine. And it's got traction tyres, but they're hard, so the pulling power isn't going to be amazing. So I don't want to stress it out too much. So here we go, let's go and couple to it and see how this works. It does seem reasonably stable, at least at that speed, though, so that's not too bad, is it? Okay, well, it seems to have coupled, and it slowed down a little bit, I noticed, when it touched the wagon, so maybe there's a bit of an issue with torque there, but of course it was running very, very slowly, so that stands to reason, I suppose. Okay, so let's see what it looks like with these, then. Hopefully quite attractive, yeah. And it seems to be shifting them just fine, so that is pretty good. It's not too bad a puller, considering. Okay, so alongside this loco, I'm going to be running some other 060 tender engines, and blimey, that's just sped up, hasn't it, suddenly? So we have uh, a similar sized tender engine, 060, from the UK, though. This is the J15, and uh, by the way, this is a very, very lovely model, a lot of die cast on this one. And uh, yeah, as you can see, as it goes past you, it does have a rake of tankers, some of them milk and some of them fuel, and some of them other sort of drinks. Not sure how legal that would be in real life, but on my railway, I don't mind that too much. And then on the inside line, I have uh, another quite old-fashioned 060. Once again, I've chosen this one to match the French one. So it is another green one, but this is from the Great Western, of course. It is the Dean Goods with a little bit of a passenger train. So enjoy the running session. Let's see how the French engine has got on around Gordon's Hill and that sort of area. And also keep your eye out and see which other engines you can spot. There is an odd one out today. So I must say, despite the limited number of wheels that actually pick up power, I must say it does run good and solidly. And looking at it on the hill, yep, yeah, it seems to have managed those just fine. A little bit of slowdown at the top there, but considering that little tiny tender is doing all the driving, it seems to pull a bit more than expected, especially since the traction tyres are a bit perished, so actually I'm quite impressed with that. But as I say, that tender does weigh 110 grams, so that's quite heavy for a little tender like that. So it should have a little bit of power, I suppose. And here comes the J15 now with her... Slightly dubious mix of fuel, Pepsi, and <laughs> milk. Yeah, a bit odd that, but at least it makes quite a nice looking uh, train of tankers. So this will be the first ever time that I've had this engine hauling goods. Last time I ran her, she pulled passenger stock. So uh, yes, she's actually doing what she was designed for now, and she looks pretty good doing it, I'd say. There we have the lovely Hornby J15 there. Great pull of that one, but as I say, so much die cast on it, it's going to be, isn't it? Oh, just lost the, uh, the French one there. Suddenly sped up, by the way, I don't know why. Yes, the uh, motor does seem to fluctuate in terms of speed, uh, which normally suggests a dirty commutator, but of course, this is only the second time it's ever run since I've serviced it. And when I did service it, I completely stripped down the motor and cleaned it thoroughly, so... Either it's gotten dirty very, very quickly, or there's uh, something else going on there. All right, so here are my ratings then for the French SNCF 060 locomotive. So as much as I like this, I think the detail has to be a two-star, doesn't it, really? I mean, it is very basic. There's very little painted detail. The cab is blank. Most of the detail is just a part of the moulding, although there are quite a few separately fitted metal components, which are quite nice touches, I think. So I think that's where most of those two stars come from. The performance is similarly about a two star, it really can't do those slow speeds unfortunately, which is a little bit of a shame. And also it's not that much of a great puller as well. The tender is quite heavy and it does have those traction tyres, 
but at the end of the day, it's just not a massively powerful loco, but the performance isn't too bad once again, considering the age. The mechanism isn't too bad either. In fact, the actual machinery inside is very, very good. There's a good quality uh, piece of kit inside there. However, it is only a three-pole motor. You only have a certain number of pickups, three on one wet rail, two going to the other. So the reliability on the rails really isn't that great. And of course, the electric to power the loco has to go through a really quite crude connection between loco and tender, uh, which doesn't cause any problems really, but you do have to sort of watch it and make sure that it's kept in good condition otherwise you will start to see bad performance uh, so yeah the mechanisms okay I've given it three stars there the quality though is very good four out of five I've given it it's very well built it seems pretty sturdy there's quite a bit of metal construction especially on the tender of course which has a very heavy metal chassis so the quality is one of the best features of the model I would say at a four star and also for the value I think 60 pounds isn't really too bad at all for this I mean it is quite a basic model of course and 60 pounds is about the most you'd really want to pay for such a basic basic model but it's not extortionate is it and once again I think you are paying a little bit there for the Riverossi brand name so overall then that is 5.97 out of 10 not too bad for an old loco don't forget this is quite an old one and into the ranking it goes then this is the vintage ranking of course there we go third just below the Hornby J94 yeah overall not too bad I can recommend them but of course don't pay too much for them so be sure and let me know down in the comment section what you thought about this one. Uh, is it for you? Do you like it? Do you detest it? <laughs> what do you like about it? What do you not? I'll be very interested to hear what you think too. Still loving those wagons. They're awesome, aren't they? All oh, right then, everybody. Well, thank you very much for joining me for this review and, of course, for European Week. I think we'll go back to some British stuff next week. What do you reckon? Uh, but I have enjoyed this, and I'll certainly do it again if uh, enough people like it. So if you do, make sure uh, to like the video and let me know in the comments to uh, let me know that you'd like to see more, of course. But for the time being, I hope you all have a great day. Thank you once again for your time and your company, and I'll see you very soon. All right, cheers, everybody.